Welcome to Getting Skeptical. I'm Tim Kammer. Thanks for tuning into the show. You know, claims of the paranormal, the super supernatural, and the mysterious seem to arouse more suspicion and curiosity than any other. And, and on this show here on Getting Skeptical, we explore some of the weird and strange things behind all those weird and strange things. And we explore the, explore the facts is what we try to do on Getting Skeptical. Welcome to the show. Coming up on this show, all sorts of things happening. I have space alien news. Uh, evolution update, oh, quite a few things. But first, the four big things that I am skeptical of. I am skeptical of claims that we've been visited by space aliens, anything to do with psychic powers, astrology, and alternative medicines. Coming up in the show, like I say, space alien news. UFO believers meet in New York home, uh, and also in space alien news, sex in zero gravity on film in the movies. In my evolution update, trees from nearly 400 million years ago. And on our psychic update, roadkill can predict the future. That's coming up. Also, UFOs and religion, UFO religions. My guest, Pat Innes, uh, joins us for that in just a few minutes. And also your phone calls. Right now, it's time for Space Alien News. <laughs> In Space Alien News, talk about going boldly where no man has gone before, a soon-to-be released X-rated Spanish film will feature the world's first explicit sex scene shot in zero gravity. And the film is titled The Uranus Experiment. Uranus? Uranus? I don't know. It was filmed on a plane uh, that climbs to 11,000 feet, then rapidly nosedives, making those inside float for about 20 seconds. The producer, Ola Nikolasson, says he could afford only one take for this history-making flick, which features porn star Nick Lang and Sylvia Saint as American and Russian astronauts. The two stars say timing was everything because they only had 20 seconds to unbuckle their seat belts and launch the rocket. The Uranus experience, uh, experiment made its American debut in Las Vegas in early January and will be released on video this month. In other space alien news, Sandy Hansen welcomed about 30 people to her home for a UFO open forum. Hansen described her experience on the peace ship that she and others described as the home away from home where humans commune and with uh, benevolent alien beings. Other members of the group claim to have befriended the kind E.T. Also at the uh, New York State home was a 66-year-old woman who told of her encounter with flying objects the size of a house shaped like a bell with lights pulsating from it. In psychic news... <laughs> The type of animal you accidentally run over while driving your car can predict your future. That's according to roadkill psychic Terry Brill of Elk Grove, California, who claims the animals crushed under her wheels offer an insight to your future, or under your wheels, depending on who's driving. Brill says running over a cat is a sign you're about to have a spiritual crisis. Running over a deer means you're about to hurt someone you love. Crushing a cow crushing a crow, rather, with your car means you're not prepared for the future. I don't know what happens if you crush a cow. <laughs> cow might crush you if you hit that 50 miles an hour. Rolling over a snake could mean you're about to have a heart attack and, uh, or other serious accident. And if you run over a dog, expect your friends to uh, take a turn for the worse, your friendships. And finally, in roadkill fortune telling, Brill says, if a bee collides with your windshield, you need to make uh, more time for yourself. Mass mosquitoes have no effect whatsoever in your future. In other psychic news, a world-renowned curse expert in Lakewood, Ohio, claims comedian Phil Hartman and four other Saturday Night Live performers were killed by a bizarre voodoo curse. The curse uh, expert, if you can call her that, Miriam Guerra Brandt, believes the uh, Saturday Night curse is revenge by a disgruntled scriptwriter whose work was rejected by the Saturday Night Live producers probably because it was lousy. Garibrand claims the rebuffed writer probably cursed the comedians by creating a voodoo puppet of the Saturday Night Live cast members and then knocking them off a toy TV set with a slingshot. 
Kara Brandt claims she can stop the curse and protect any still alive Saturday Night Live cast member, but uh, only if the stars call her up and ask for her personally. And up to the minute news, that's next. A company is trying to erase an embarrassing mistake it made on pencils bearing the anti-drug message. The pencils carry the slogan, too cool to do drugs. But a sharp-eyed fourth grader in northern New York noticed when the pencils were sharpened, the message turns into cool to do drugs, then simply do drugs. That's the up to the minute news. Right now, it's time for an evolution update. Wow, we hear In our evolution update, the earliest known modern tree was uh, an extinct plant that lived about 370 million years ago, that according to a team of international botanists. The plant had the same structure of modern trees, but it took millions of years for it to evolve into the mighty giants that fill forests today. Now, for decades, botanists described uh, descriptions of the first tree were based on leaves and bits of wood and fossil rocks. In a report in the science journal Nature, scientists describe how they found 150 fossilized examples of the extinct plant in three locations in Morocco. Turns out that the first wood trees on Earth had the exact same design as modern trees. Researchers say the plant was the first to develop an extensive root system, creating an impact on soil chemistry. This has been an evolution update. Four million! Now coming up, UFOs and religion as one subject, UFO religions, with my guests. But first, we have a new feature here on Getting Skeptical. Now, you've heard of late-night radio talk show host Art Bell, coast to coast. Well, we have one better now. It's uh, TV talk show host Bart Bell, live, lake to lake. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bart Bell, lake to lake, on Getting Skeptical. Come on, equipment. Welcome to Bart Bell, Lake to Lake. Good to have you here. Wild card line, you're on the air. Wild Hi, card. I'm a first time caller. First time caller, you're on the air. Yeah, I'm from the East Coast. East of the Rockies, you're on the air. Well, I live there, but I'm calling from Oregon right now. West of the Rockies. Yeah, I, I was wondering what station you're on and, and the Times in Medford. Why, did you see a UFO? No, I just wanted to know. Uh, how about a ghost? No, not a ghost. Come is on, this Bart Bell? Uh, yes, it is. You're a psychic. Ha, 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 ha. A remote viewer somewhere up there with an out-of-body experience. Watching me, I believe you. You could see me. Turn your radio down. <laughs> well, folks, you may recall, about a year ago, I told you that there was an event, a threatening, terrible event, occurred to my family, which I could not tell you about. And because of that event and a succession of other events, what you're listening to right now is my final broadcast. <laughs> That's it, folks. Last week I told you it was my last broadcast. Well, I'm back, but now I gotta go. So, this is it, folks. It's going to end. Can't return. But, uh, well, so for now, in the foreseeable future, this is this man's end of his broadcast career. Uh, maybe I will be back next week. I like this music. Yeah, I'll come back next week. Okay. Ha, ha, ha. Bark, 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 bark. That's Bart Bell, we call him here on Getting Skeptical. Got to make sure my mic's up. That's a new feature here on Getting Skeptical, and we hope to have more in shows to come. Now, UFO sightings have been around for decades, and religion has been around a lot longer. 
But is, uh, is it time for a new religion, you ask? Hey, how about a UFO-based religion? Well, they're out there. My guest has done a lot of research on the topic of UFOs and religions, and his name is Pat Innes. Welcome to the show, Pat. Appreciate Thanks. you having you here. Thanks, Tim. Pleasure to be here. Going to get you, get you all set here. Got mic levels going. So this whole UFO and, and, and religion thing, uh, so it's like, it's like how, could, how could spaceships, and, uh, how could spaceships or, or maybe the thought of spaceships, actually become some kind of a religion well it's uh they're kind of coming together i think if you're you know w watching what's going on in the uh, past several decades you'll see almost a, a melding of uh, various ufos ufo beliefs and religious beliefs now it's you know it's interesting if you start talking about people that believe in ufos and you talk, talk talking about people that believe in god there's philosophically there's a very there's a natural similarity there you believe in ufos you don't really have proof you have sort of faith it's something that there is no really proof for. Nobody's really come back with even a nut or bolt from a UFO. Right. And you believe in God. There's no or, proof Or there. like Carl, Carl Sagan says, an ashtray, maybe. That'd be kind of <laughs> nice. So anything would be great, yeah. But uh, the evidence is, uh, is forthcoming, maybe, but nobody's really put it on the table yet. So you have to have the same kind of mindset, the same kind of men mentality there. But there's a, a widespread interest in UFOs. Uh, one recent survey said that there's been about 60% uh, about of the, 60% uh, of Americans believe that there is intelligent life in the universe. And uh, a lot of those apparently believe that there are UFOs flying around in our atmosphere from other planets. A lot of those believe that they've visited here. So now why, why would intelligent life on another planet be, be some kind of, or be considered some kind of a god then? Well, they have a lot of the same characteristics, Tim. I mean, mastery over time and space, especially if you, if you look even beyond the, the uh, Christian context into, into other religions, you see that there's a whole panoply of gods, and some of them can be related to having certain characteristics that one would think aliens would have. You know, they travel at super speeds, they are, have different appearance than human beings do. So the, uh, the, you can, it's easy to equate uh, aliens with gods. And actually, some, some uh, people have done that, some ministers in mainstream religions even. Uh, recently, there was a thing uh, where uh, Pat Robertson uh, described uh, his attitude toward religion. If I can look at, look at my notes here, his attitude toward UFOs. Pat Robertson seems to think that uh, aliens, if they do exist, are some type of demons. He puts them you know, clearly in the context of, of Christianity. I'll read you a quote here. Can a demon appear as a slanty-eyed, funny-looking creature? Of course he can, or it can. Of course they can deceive people. And if they can lead somebody away from the true God, or away from Jesus Christ, any way it happens, it doesn't matter. You lose your salvation. It doesn't matter how, you, how they get to you. The question is, did they get you, and under what guise? So his his position is that if if aliens do exist, they're demons. They're you know out to lead you away from the true path toward toward the Lord. Right. So so as, yeah, I understand that. So as far as uh, what he's saying, as far as Christianity or any other kind of religion, uh, especially what it, I, I think actually what it says in the Bible is is something about be be prepared, uh, be aware of false gods, anything that leads you away, and so what they're now coming to some kind of a weird conclusion or, or this type of quote they're saying that uh, it, it leads you away it doesn't matter what it is whether it's aliens from another planet or god or whatever it's leading you away from god because now you're making it your own type of religion i guess well that's what pat robertson and a, and a number of the other fundamentalist ministers are saying about ufos about aliens but this not it's not like anything else in religion there's plenty of room for disagreement, there's there's other other people that view aliens as being kind of friendly. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Louis Farrakhan apparently claims that he's actually visited an alien spaceship and communed with aliens and has some, kind of a working relationship with aliens. We've got some audio there to where he describes this. Yeah, let's go ahead and listen to this. This is uh, Louis Farrakhan, uh, and he's talking about UFOs or something like that. Okay, let's check. Five it out. years ago. I was given a vision on a wheel that you call UFOs today. I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad just as clearly as you hear my voice. And he told me that
that President Reagan, who was president at that time, had met with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to plan a war. He did not tell me where the war would take place or who the war was planned against, but he told me that I should hold a press conference and tell them what the government had planned and tell them that I got it from him on the wheel. That's interesting. So, Louis Farrakhan talking about the wheel, the UFO, the mothership. <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, Farrakhan apparently has, uh, as a leader of you know, this religion, has a special place apparently um, with the aliens, and he meets, meets with them. Uh, Elijah Muhammad meets with them. It's a little fuzz on that in terms of, I think Farrakhan at various times has kind of backed off that a little bit, saying, well, this was just a vision, this was just a dream. Uh, but if you, if you want to, you can read uh, his uh, paper, uh, The Final Call, and get uh, some more information on that. As a matter of fact, when the, in, the movie Independence Day came out, yeah. Farrakhan, uh, there, the uh, Nation of Islam had a reaction to that, and they said basically well, they were just ripping off uh, what actually happened with, uh, with Louis Farrakhan, and uh, the ship, the, you know, the mothership in uh, that movie actually was, the, you know, a portrayal of the ship that... Uh, that Lewis visited, and uh, where you, may, you get these uh, predictions of future events. Uh, now, now, and, and now, they do they uh, or they? I don't know about the Nation of Islam religion itself, but Farrakhan does he believe that that uh, Independence Day, the movie Independence Day, will something like that will happen? Is that kind of like a documentary of something that'll happen in the future? Is that what he's saying? Well, he's saying that it has elements of reality in it, but he says that they did change the uh, the final outcome because in the end the aliens are going to win as a punishment to the white race. And punishing mainly the white race then? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let me just uh, quote you here uh, from the, the Final Call newspaper. All the, all the methods used by the government to harm the real mother plane have failed. Just their eff efforts to crush the na nation of Islam have failed. Frankly, this government needs help desperately. I think the best thing they can do is consult with Minister Farrakhan. Now, if anybody has more, I mean, things they want to contact you, we've got your web page on the screen. Yeah. And uh, that's how we get a hold of you somehow uh, through that way. That'd be pretty good. We could also take phone calls. Uh, do you want to take any phone calls? Uh, sure. Okay, let's see what we got here. All righty. Hi, you aren't getting skeptical? I can't give a fuck. Okay. There's Park Shop. Pork chop, always calling. First call from the mothership. Yeah, there's, there's pork chop. He's up in the mother, mothership. We call uh, that guy pork chop because, uh, and I got to remind people of this every week. As a child, his parents had to tie a pork chop around his neck so his dog would play with him. Hi, you're on getting skeptical. Um, what is your subject about? Uh, UFO religion. UFO religion. Yeah, yeah. UFO religion. Oh yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for quiet call. Okay, great. Love that. That's always fun. <laughs> um, there's the phone number on the screen, 206-421-5005. Hi, you're on Getting Skeptical. Yeah, hi. Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. we got to turn this down. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I think you have an interesting topic, Tim. And this is Kevin from RQ2 Club Diversity. And I just want to say it's good to see you on the screen. Club Diversity? What is that? Another television show there at TCI. You've helped uh, do cameras for me. Oh, right, right. Yeah, okay. Got you now. Got so, you anyway, now. Anyway, congratulations. I just was uh, looking at TCI, and it's good to see that you have a show. All right, thanks. You got a question about UFOs and religion? I mean, do you think that, uh, like, there's weird, uh, weird religions out there, say, uh, some religion based on UFOs and space aliens? Well, let's put it in this context. I think spiritually, how can people not think that there's any other life out there completely, totally? I mean... And beyond this body, we all know that there's so much more. So that's all I'll say. Well, you know, and that's a good question, a uh, good, uh, good response. Appreciate the call. Uh, but see, that doesn't, that's the whole thing. You know, I, I get, that's almost like an argument I get in with, with people all the time. Uh, not to say that he was arguing with me, but people say, well, how could you not believe that there's uh, UFOs and aliens visiting us? There must, there's a billion stars out there, a trillion stars out there. Well, that's not the point. So far, I don't believe they have visited us. So if they haven't visited us and the evidence is as is, is thin as thread, then why is it becoming a religion? 
well, as, as the topic we're talking about now. Yeah, th that's, I guess, what we should uh, distinguish here. I, I guess I'm not really saying that there aren't UFOs. Okay, may, there may very well be. The odds, based on the lack of evidence, seems to be that they're against, and a lot of scientists have put work into figuring out the mathematical odds that any aliens could visit us. But in the absence of that evidence, I mean, a religion is supposed to be something that captures your most essential profoundest beliefs and your values and to base all that on on something like uh, belief in UFOs seems to be uh, something just kind of borders on dangerous and I think we've seen the evidence of what can happen there in the Heaven's Gate episode yeah uh, that was a real tragedy which cost many people their lives and all because they uh, suspended really their their critical critical thinking processes. They made that leap to faith. They accepted what the preacher man was telling them. They did not examine uh, the facts of the case critically, and they ended up dead. Uh, a lot of consequences, I'm sure, that are less uh, mortal than that. You know, may maybe you just waste a lot of time, you know, pursuing uh, pursuing this belief, pursuing this interest that this has no basis in reality. But ultimately, there can be pretty dire consequences to the, to these this, these sort of faiths. Yeah, the interesting thing now, now it's starting to get into cults, because the Heaven's Gate cult, uh, I, I was listening to an interview with one of the people that was in it up until a few months before they all committed suicide. He was talking about something as simple, and these cults are so strange, they're so weird, talking about something as simple as shaving. He had, you can only shave down. You can't shave up. And he's such in a habit of shaving this way and that way, but the, what the rule was, you shave down. Now, I remember, it, it kind of reminds me when I was in basic training in, in the Air Force. There's all these simple, silly little rules. And you, you can't have your soap touch your toothpaste, which can't touch the side of the, the drawer, and all these other things. But there's reasons for all those. Because there's 50 of us in this barracks, and one guy might be uh, fixing airplanes, another guy might be fixing electronics. And if the guy in electronics puts the wrong uh, size of resistor, that might wreck a radio, that might end up... Uh, costing lives or another guy might not put a, a bolt on correctly so it's attention to detail there's reasons for all that but these guys shaving this way is this weird guy apple white or applegate what's his marshall apple white right doe the guy called doe it's his thing there's no there's no rhyme or, or reason to that hi you're on getting skeptical hi guys i was wondering if you'd ever fuck okay thanks a lot poor yeah, child. I, I wanted to answer that question I don't even know. It's, you know, that's the longest he's spoken without belching. I think he was talking about that uh, movie that they made. Uh, Hi, you're on Getting Skeptical. Hi, have you ever fucked? Um, Porkchop there just loves to bother us. Um, it, I wonder if it strains him to walk upright. Hi, you're on Getting Skeptical. Hello. You know what? <laughs> I cut off somebody that may not have been. You there? Hello. Hello. Yeah, I just had a question. Are you saying that Farrakhan believes he's coming from a mothership and is God? <laughs> C coming from? I don't know if you said that. Go ahead and answer that. Thanks for the call. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and keep you on. What do you? I think he he's saying that he did visit the mothership. That's the implication there. Like I said, he's done a little backpedaling on this, and he's he's uh, first this first story first came out in about 1990 and was reported in the Washington Post. The audio I had of uh, film, uh, relating basically the same thing was, uh, I'm not sure the date or time of that, but if you listen to the thing, he talks about it being a vision. So there's some, he, he put enough fuzz on there so he can actually deny that he was actually aboard the ship. But what he's saying is, apparently, he believes that there, there are alien spacecraft and that the, lead, the dead Elijah Muhammad communicated to him aboard that spaceship, either in reality or in some divinely inspired vision that he had. So I, I'm afraid I can't really answer that question, yes or no, whether he actually believes that or not. But do you heard, did you hear the tape? Uh, no, I didn't. I just turned you in. Oh, yeah, we just had a tape, and he was talking about the UFO and the wheel in the sky. Is that how he said it? Wheel. Yeah. Yeah. He certainly didn't have these beliefs when he was his, uh, Martin Luther King's right-hand man, did he? I think you may have be a little bit mistaken that Louis Farrakhan was ever Martin Luther King's right-hand man. Actually, he was uh, way, you know, uh, away from uh, Martin Luther King oh, yeah. uh, philosophically and politically. Yeah, yeah, he never worked with uh, Martin Luther King, but... Oh. All right, thanks. Okay, thanks for calling. Appreciate the call. Um, yeah, it, the other thing about uh, Farrakhan, Farrakhan that, um, you know, I, I guess by the, by the tone of the caller, it's like, what? 
he's saying there's he's been on a UFO and on a you know that seems weird, but the interesting thing about uh, Farrakhan is that he um, also was really into numerology. Right. I mean, and numerology is is one of the silliest pseudosciences there is. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of them out there, and it's one of them. And, and that right there is, is enough to say the guy's thinking something strange. Hi, you're on getting skeptical. Do you believe in aliens? Do I believe in aliens? Yeah. I believe that there are probably a very good chance that there's a lot of life out there. I believe it's probably very rare that uh, there's intelligent life, but there's so much opportunity for suns just like ours. So yeah, I believe that there's intelligent life out there. Some of it uh, may be long gone. They, they may be just, just in their uh, years of cowboys and Indians, or maybe they're 500 years be ahead of us technologically wise, but I don't think we've ever been visited by aliens. Have you ever seen one? Uh, the only one I've ever seen is right here behind Pat's head. That's the only a alien I've ever seen. Is that Einstein by that alien? Oh, no, there's Einstein right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. But um, I've seen a spaceship before. Oh, have you? Yeah. And how do you know it was a spaceship? The, I've seen this special on TV about UFOs, and they say that well, if you look at a UFO, they can tell, and they shut off all the lights so you can't see it anymore. Well, that's just somebody's oh. interpretation, but... Uh, that doesn't prove that it's uh, an alien ship. That just means it's something in the sky with lights that just turned off at the same time that you were thinking, gee, I wonder if it's looking at me, but it doesn't really mean it was an alien ship. When it lands and somebody comes out, and somebody comes out of that ship, that's when we, uh, that's when we can probably say, hey, especially if their heart is in a different place, and, I mean, biological, <laughs> not their <laughs> thought, and their, and their, uh, their liver, or maybe they don't have a liver, maybe they have something else. That's when we know it's something from another planet. But we got to do all that research, and, and then we got to have more proof than just lights in the sky. Okay, I'm looking at something next to that alien on the, um, right, it's on the right side of the alien, behind you. Uh, way up in the top corner here? Yeah. That's a picture from that uh, stupid uh, hoax of the uh, alien autopsy that turned out to be uh, a hoax. It turned out wow. to be false. You know, that alien autopsy film that came out. And, uh, I, have, and I have one more thing to say. Um, How much time do I have? 30 seconds? Yeah. Okay. I have 30 seconds. We've got to let you go. I appreciate your call. There's the phone number. Pat Innes, thank you very much for joining me on Getting Skeptical. That's the show. Thanks for tuning in, and we appreciate you uh, watching. Bye.